Yeah, I woke up in my mechanic's bed this morning. Welcome back. Welcome back. We got news. News that you can use. News that you can use, indeed. Do you remember this airplane? It's a 1950 Beechcraft Bonanza model B35 versus my 1963 model P35. It's an E-series Bonanza, so it's got an E225 engine. It's not an E35 airplane. Anyways, go follow the Bonanza Pilot channel. They'll tell you all about E-series Bonanzas. This Bonanza just needs an annual. The more we look around it, the more we realize it was really well maintained and someone really, really loved this airplane. I'm going to have a whole video dedicated to wrapping up the annual on this airplane and then we'll get closer to first flight. It's going to be a little bit different from the first flight on my P-35. It's got different performance. It's got a wobble pump for starting. It's got fixed seats so I can't adjust forward or aft. But we're going to have more on the channel about this particular airplane. So stick around for that. The Bonanza, my Bonanza, my other Bonanza, is wrapping up the work on the avionics and the upholstery. Here's a little insight that I recorded a little bit earlier that I want to pass on to you. More value for your brain. Here we go. I forgot there might be new people here. Um, let's address the waking up in the mechanic's bed thing. Um, my mechanic lives at an airport full time. That's just what he does. His living situation is exactly the same as his working situation is exactly the same as his is everything. His workplace sleep is airplanes, airport. And he offered me up a cozy place to sleep. Some say his teeth make perfect crimps and that his arm is more accurate than a calibrated torque wrench. I call him TI-85 and thank you for giving me a place to sleep so I could get out early in the morning to go check on airplanes. Okay, a month's hard work has led us to this point. The airplane is being put back together. Instrument panel is still outside the airplane, but all the difficult stuff, right? The wiring, the circuit breakers, all of the crimps, all of the pins, all of the back shells, all the connectors, those things are all in the airplane and essentially ready to go. What I have to do now is put the physical objects back into the airplane so we can do a functional test. Turn the power on, see what works, see what doesn't work. If you've been asking questions, there's the guy that's making it happen. He has no time to do this, but I'm guilting him with beer and what else? I mean, 3D printed speed mods for the uh, for the Comanche. Yeah, I'm making stuff for his airplane, so this is an equal trade, and um, he is entrusting me to put this stuff back together. He'll come back out, sign all the paperwork, and say that I have an airplane that is again earworthy. At the same time, I've got to remember to do this because we've been pretty bad at this. I've got to remember to log some of the time I've spent working on the airplane for my future AMP rights, right? My future AMP uh, desires. So I'll have to remember to start putting this project into the logbook for my own AMP stuff in the future. So it's gonna be the GTN 750 and the GNC 215. Those are the two that we're gonna to look to power up because everything else was working before. And unless we did something stupid, it should still work today. Um, the goal right now, and I'm on a lunch break, I'll need to get back to work here in a little bit, but after work today, the goal is gonna be, I'll get back over here, put the stuff in, tighten it all up, and then a couple days from now, we'll go through and make sure all the wiring is, is neat and tidy away from control surfaces, or sorry, away from control um, actuators or control throws. The yoke is a massive mechanism behind the instrument panel. Um, you know, we'll do a functionality test on the ground and then the airplane will be airworthy again. Although, we'll then put it down and make sure we complete the parts of the annual that I haven't been able to do, like the oil change, um, compression test. Uh, I'm going to grease all the required areas on the airframe. And then we still have to look out on the wings and back here in the empennage to see that the controls are doing what they're supposed to do. 
Now, you've probably got questions about how much this stuff costs and how much time exactly I've spent doing this, and it's really difficult to answer the question of time, but it's easy to answer the question of cost. I'll give you some round numbers. GTN 750, I picked up used online. I think that was either 10 or $11,000. I don't remember exactly how much I haggled the guy down to, but he was really nice to me and gave it to me at a great price. So let's call that 12K with all the stuff included. Um, and then GDL 88, I think I spent, uh, what, like a thousand dollars, 1200 bucks on that? Not entirely sure. 1800 bucks, yeah. Um, the GNC 215, again, this has been so long since I ordered this stuff, but less than two grand. I mean, it was probably another 1800 bucks. And then you've got the money and circuit breakers, which breakers are expensive. They're like 30 bucks, 40 bucks a piece. Um, Hopefully they'll certify the, um, the digital circuit breakers before too long. Oh yeah, the SSPCs, soft yeah, circuit um, breakers, yeah. Power tower thing. That would be awesome. Yeah, there's a company that sells a little box and it just has inlets or inputs and outputs. And uh, actually just outputs. You put one, one power source in and then individual power sources out and you get to use your touch screen like the GTN 750 or a G3X to toggle what breaker you want on and off. It's a digital breaker, so that you don't have to run this rat's nest behind the airplane. I would 100% spend money on something like that. But yeah, cost of breakers, each one was probably 30 bucks, 40 bucks. So I needed about three or four new breakers. Um, and then you have miscellaneous stuff like wires, pins, that's toss in another 200 or 300 bucks for that miscellaneous stuff. But the thing that I can't compute is A, tools, because you need a lot of really great tools, and he's got a lot of great tools. Shout out to Wiremasters, best place to buy wire. Wiremasters, that's a good yeah. tip. So yeah, um, little spec wire. Yeah. So a fraction of the price of you go into Spruce or, um, or any of the other countries, like other companies. That makes sense, right? So we've they talked about. Yeah, we've, we've talked about this before. Um, you need to have things that have some traceability, right? When you're working on airplanes, it's always really nice to have something that you can trace back to some standard. And a mil-spec standard is usually good enough for um, doing stuff on small Part 23, car three, you know, Part 91 operation type uh, airplanes. Um, wire is one of those deals where you don't necessarily have aviation specific wiring, but you do need to have something that has a mil spec on it or some standard like ASTM. Um, and Wire Masters, this is not sponsored. They, These, they send them all the paperwork. Yeah. They send a stack of paperwork for traceability. Apparently you get a stack of paperwork with your, with your wire bundle and you know how, uh, how it's manufactured and what uh, spec it meets. So spruce is really expensive when it comes to wire. I know that for sure because I've made that mistake in the past. Um, but wire masters apparently is the way to go. You have to order it in bulk. Sky Geek not bad. Yeah, Sky Geek too? Yeah, I've, I've noticed that on Sky Geek. If you order something on spruce today, it's, it's shipped tomorrow. Sky Geek is a, probably three, four days before it ever ships. So that, there's useful criticism for Sky Geek if anyone's listening. But Wire Masters Sky Geek for wiring is the recommendation. Um, and then everything else you could probably get through Spruce or online sources like Facebook Marketplace. You're looking for used avionics, make sure you go and get it in person. Uh, make sure you find the person that can power it on. And more specifically than that, it should technically come with an 8130, a form that's called an 8130, which is their way, the seller's way of letting you know that the part has been evaluated by an authorized repair station. Someone has already said that this unit is good to go per the standards that that part or that piece of avionics needs to meet. Okay, whoa, 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 slow down. Let's talk a little bit about the 8130 form from the FAA. It's usually an 8130-3 and it's really the authorized release certificate. So it's a way for an authorized repair station or the seller or manufacturer of a certain thing to prove that that thing that you're buying is in airworthy condition. Only they, the people who are authorized to sign off on this form, can issue this form and say, this piece of equipment is safe and ready to go back into an airplane as an airworthy component. So you're looking for what's called an 8130. 
Okay, glad we talked about that a little bit. I can expand in the future, but I don't want people to drag me in the comments for not slowing down to mention that to you. All right, let's keep moving. Um, so a lot of information in, what's that, seven minutes? I know you want great value, but this is a great way for me to get stuff out of my head. I'm gonna put the total, or the uh, approximate total, right about here, under my hand somewhere, about what I spent on the avionics um, for this particular airplane. The upholstery, probably right at $6,000. I know it sounds crazy that it's not like 20,000 because the upholstery looks so good, but right about six grand in uh, the stuff from Generation Global, the, uh, you know, the, the glues and the screws and the random material I need to cover things here and there. Um, but, you know, I, I, I can't compute my time, right? I can't compute Simon's time. We'll come to an agreement on what that time is or was, and we'll find ways to compensate our maintenance professionals appropriately after we compute that time. So time is in a bottle thrown into the sea that washes ashore somewhere else. I don't know. That's my poetry for today. Thanks for tuning in. Hope this number did not scare you. I'll have you uh, check in when we power this thing up some other time. Wait, before we go, there's one more thing Simon has to bring up. Pulling crap like this out of the aircraft, you've got expensive avionic components. This was off of the JPI, which I'm not sure how much you paid for your JPI. I like two grand. I mean, yeah. yeah, it was pretty expensive. And a fuse and... <laughs> Automotive style crimps. crimps. Uh, yeah. When yeah. good avionics you want on a proper push-pull breaker. Yeah. You don't want... Um, Definitely not on an old fuse with, yeah, car spices. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you see the thing? So people know, and I've made this abundantly clear, that I am cheap, but I'm not that cheap. You know, I'm not cheap when it comes to already spending tens of thousands of dollars in avionics and then trusting an unknown vendor to protect said avionics. There might be a five amp fuse in there, but what if that thing was not manufactured appropriately? and it doesn't pop until 20 amps, I don't know. But at least with some of this aviation stuff, like we talked about mil spec, we talked about ASTM, we talked about JE, JAE at some point, they have some requirement to meet. And so you kinda know that things are gonna go okay, you know? So don't, uh, you know, don't, don't, don't do that. And if you see that, find a person that can help you correct it. It, it looks fine, it's it's really not. It's the sort of thing that will lead you to hours of troubleshooting. Yeah, so Simon says it's the sort of thing that will lead you to hours of troubleshooting, and he's absolutely right. It's those tiny little things. And him as an avionics type person, he's looking for a certain thing, right? So when something fails, he's not looking for that fuse. He's probably looking at circuit breakers, he's looking at the resistivity of a wire, he's looking for, you know, chafing, not... <laughs> That, that would not be in the manual or the drawings for the airplane anywhere. So yeah, just something to think about. We'll, um, we'll do better. We pulled that out and gonna toss it in the trash. Oh, the other thing you found was like eight grounds going to a single, um, a single stud. And we pulled those out. Everything in the airplane was grounded to like the same point. Yeah, yeah I mean, that was, so, you, so the maximum um, rate grounds go into one stud should be four. Four, okay. And there's several reasons for that. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise you can have a lot of current going through one point. That, that's right. Yeah, you'll yeah. start melting stuff if things go wrong, right? And also if that was one stud was to break, that's you your literally whole, use, yeah. lose everything. That's so the whole it's system. a big single point of failure. Yeah, so we've rectified that. Um, I, I, I mean, I'm not making this up. I, I kid you not. It, it was like eight things going to one little stud on a on a bracket um, and I wouldn't have seen that if we hadn't done this project we I've looked all over this airplane and never saw I was never looking for those grounding points until we're doing this work right now so there are some tips um, again and earlier in the video we talked about cost but um, we're really close to turning this on um, to the point where I could pull the airplane outside and start running it again continue the prop balance, do all that kind of stuff. So hopefully you find this quick hit style video helpful. Um, I'm at a phase of my life right now where I've got way too many things going on and I wanna continue delivering value to you. So 
uh, it, the, the video may not have a rhyme, reason, or flavor. I think this one was maybe more about getting it done and you know moderate amounts of cost. But um, this is really helping me produce stuff faster. Um, so I can get it out there so you can learn something and maybe even be a little bit more safe by checking your grounding points on your airplane. Okay, for the second time, we're out. Take care of yourselves. We'll see you later. Some say that Chuck Yeager once asked for his autograph.